bright, isn't it? I was just letting that song run for a while just to build your expectation. And then when I came on stage, just deliver so little. You know, rather like life. Um, it's kind of been a hard week. I say that it's been a hard week. I know we're on Tuesday, but it's been a hard couple of weeks, hasn't it? Um, space has been an issue for me. A lot of people I know have been talking to me about space. And I don't actually have a television of sorts. So when they were talking about sort of the solar system, the planets, the universe, I was assuming that the keyboard player from D-Ring has got one of his uh, programs on the television again. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, well, if, that, if that's your bag, you know, the stars, the planets, everything like that, great. I mean, it's, it's not mine, but you crack on. Then I found out that they just meant they wanted space from me, um, which was a little bit awkward, a little bit awkward, mainly because the latest person to join that lineup is my counsellor. Um, yeah, she's, uh, she's gone on sabbatical, or maybe she's just stopped wanting to talk to me, I'm not quite sure which it is, but I'm kind of up here freewheeling, um, so I just thought I'd warn you because I normally get 10 minutes with her, and um, 10 minutes, my god, is that the NHS? No, um, I normally get an hour with her, I've got 10 minutes with you, and so it could go into some very weird and wonderful places. Um, one of the reasons I have a counsellor, just one of the reasons, right, because I've got lots of issues and he's not getting credit for them all. Um, I was actually seeing this guy and he ran off. Sounds odd, doesn't it? Ran off. Like, he, uh, he put his things in a little spotted hanky and then skipped off to find his fortune. <laughs> what he actually did was he actually just ran off with a middle-aged woman, which is fine, because I like my mum as well. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the counsellor said to me, she said to me, there's a lot of anger there, Jessica, a lot of anger. You know, you need, to, you need to sort that out. Just think about maybe one memory of your time with James where you can think of just joy, just pure joy. And I was like... It's going to be really difficult, you know? It's going to be really hard. And she was like, just something with lots of hope, lots of light, no animosity, just a joyful memory. And so I was like, oh. Yeah, the time you ran over a cyclist. Um, because I hate cyclists. If you are a cyclist, I'm sorry, but I do hate you. He didn't kill them. He, he just kind of nudged them a bit, you know? And I like to think, if you if you want to feel better about it, I like to think that they were very, very much in the wrong place at very, very much the right time. <laughs> um, I think my, my hatred was actually compounded when I moved to Bath and discovered Deliveroo, which, uh, for the uninitiated, Deliveroo is kind of where you go, you can order some very, very unhealthy food and get it cycled to you by a teenager wearing Lycra, which, if you think about it, in any other profession is probably illegal. Um, but so I don't really, really get it very much. But it's really their attitude, isn't it? You know, they, they act like they've come from a triathlon via the Winter Olympics and just thought to throw you a cheeseburger on their way home. And um, yeah, I don't get it. But I did at the start of the, uh, the year, and this guy climbed all the way up my stairs because I live in an attic on my own, if you can't tell. And uh, yeah, he got there, and he was like, Oh, you know, right, here's your stuff. And I was like, thank you. He was just about ready to go. And I said, um, excuse me, you've, uh, you've forgotten my beer? And he turned and he looked at me with an expression that basically said, you fat piece of shit. <laughs> and so that's kind of why I hate delivery. And it's the app, isn't it, as well, you know? The app is basically invented for you to order something and then watch it being cycled manically away from you for about 40 minutes until so you eventually ring customer services and they say, oh yes, sorry, sorry, we can't phone them now, they're cycling. Yes, I know they're cycling, I can see them cycling, that is the point, that's why I'm ringing you. It makes me very enraged, you know? And I thought, maybe to, to counteract this rage, I should start dating again, because that's always a good thing. <laughs> and I don't know if anyone here has done any online dating. No, don't, it's shit. But I mean, really, I keep getting matched with posh people. 
I don't know whether there's some kind of community scheme going on, um, you know, what it is, but literally, forget the royal wedding, I'm going to be in Buckingham Palace by November, um, I'm going to be up there on the balcony with all those people, right, I'm going to be up there standing next to the Queen, I ain't going to like those people on the balcony, I ain't going to agree with the royal family, but I'm going to be up there waver, waving, wondering how the hell I got there, which I suppose is generally what Prince Philip does all the time, but you know, but there I'm going to be. And I, and I saw this guy, and he said to me, oh, what prep school did you go to? I said, my mother worked in Woolworths. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but he had, he had this really long, convoluted surname. He was the kind of guy that, you know, you know that when it came to exam time, he'd be putting up his hand asking for more paper before the exam had even started, you know? And um, he said to me, he said, do you want to come and see the giant octopus at Bristol Aquarium? No. Not David Attenborough. What, why would I want to go and see something that is essentially a giant sea spider and wait for it to break out of its aquarium and go after me, lollopsing with its big mollusks? And don't tell me they can't run because 16 people on Yahoo Answers confirm that they can. And then it will just devour me in 10 minutes. I said, look, look, let's just cut to the chase. Do you want to come over here? So he was like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll come over to your house. So he came over to my house. On the way, he rang me up. I thought the Queen was talking to me. You know, I thought she's phoned. I thought, oh, no, that's not a stupid voice you put on. That's actually how you speak. So he came over, and it was then it became clear that he was kind of talking about control a lot. The kind of control that's become quite popular in those Janet and John books. You know, Janet likes the whip. John likes the chain. Do not involve the dog at any cost at all. Um, and I said to him, well, that escalated quickly from looking at a rock. Well, I've seen it. Um, but anyway, so he's talking to me about that. And, uh, and I said, look, if I wanted to, to be told that I'm shit at something and I'm controlling, I'd go to work because I get paid for that. <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know, it, it's just very odd. And I was like, you can't tie me up. No, not for an iPad. Well, I've already got an iPad. What kind of weirdo wants two iPads? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that was that was a brisk encounter, but I'm sure that gem of society is still on Tinder, if you wish to go down that route. But I thought, you know what? What's the best thing if you're a British person and you're trying to squash your feelings down into a tiny little box that you can't feel anymore? It's to go out with somebody who has more issues than you, so that then you seem less fucked up. Um, so I found someone. It was great, he was posh as well, because I've learned that mainly what they teach you at private school is to suppress your feelings and successfully roll a joint. Um, so I'm, I'm great, I'm looking forward to my nephews going there and the skills they will teach me. But, so he, he was kind of, he was alright. We had two things in common, which, and if you've got two things in common, that's generally, in Match.com terms, marriage. Um, number one was that we could both spell. Number two it was was that we both wanted to sleep with the musician Ezra Furman. So it was going along fine. And this one goes out to anyone who's sort of pretend non-relationship, the glue of which is being held together by adoration for a gender non-conforming Jewish rock musician. <laughs> Maybe just me, I don't know. But anyway, it was going along fine until, uh, yeah, one day I put six ends in the beginning. So then I realised... We had one thing in common, but, um, but it was fine. He used to give me lots of things, you know, for no reason at all. And he actually made me a lovely thing for Valentine's Day. And I'm just going to show it to you now. Um, I'll try and put this microphone back on the stand. There we go. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody can see that. Oh, my God, I'm kicking everything over. But, yes, it is... A mask of Ezra Furman's face. So just for full effect, I should put it on. <laughs> now forgive me, but it's actually not to see or in fact breathe um, with this thing on. But so I might take it off. Because, you know, it needs must. It needs must.
but yeah, he suggested that I might wear that sort of when he came to visit me. I didn't question it, he's from Hackney, I assume it's what they're all doing. Um, yeah, and so he said, you know, do you want to wear it so when we go out, when we go to the pub, when you're in your flat, in, in bed, in the morning? And I thought, he must really like me. <laughs> Turns out he didn't, because, I mean, we've been having some awful weather, haven't we, recently? But he sent me a text message on Friday, and it started off, it said, Bit snowed in in London. Annoying. I don't want to see you anymore. Because I don't like you, to be blunt. And blunt was the word I said there. I know there is another word that rhymes with that, that I was thinking at the time. And, uh, yeah, and so I was like, I can glue it. It's quite smooth. If I put some super glue on, I could wear it all the time. Please. Please. T t to be honest, I'll get a tattoo artist with a bit of ingenuity and um, they can just tattoo it on my face. Honestly. Honestly. That was kind of met with an odd silence. Um, but my friend Stacey's been really good. She said to me, well, do you know what, Jessica, after all this episode, you've got to think to yourself, what kind of man do you want to date? I thought, well, okay, somebody who's articulate, who's well-read, who can string a sentence together, edgy enough to keep my interest, and is a bit of a thinker. And she said, well, you know you can write to people on death row. <laughs> Like the BBC, I'm watching those documentaries. They're all ugly, but it's all right. I'm going to fill the form out and ask for a thin one. Um, you know, and it's just great. So I've got the form here. She actually printed it out for me. It's lovely. And if we look at it, it's great. It's, uh, yeah, human rights membership form. Fantastic. You have to pay £23 to join this club. Match.com is £4.99. <laughs> Like, it, it's great. I'm, but do you know what? I'm going to fill out the form, take my chances, and hope maybe one of them's nudged a cyclist. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go to our